Hello and welcome back to the Heroes of the Storm Road to BlizzCon July North American Open. I am Gillyweed. Joining me in this cast for this best of three and the rest of the weekend is Prosser. Hello, Anna. And the rest of our lives in friendship. That's true. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> also joining us in this cast is, in fact, Poa. Oh, can you see her? a little appearance. Hey, there she oh, is. Buddy. She helps me cast. Uh, of course. Moral she, support. She also, like, whispers you things like, uh, follow Rhaegar only, please. I would like to check him out more. <laughs> I think it's just selfish. I think she likes to watch the NA Open from the front seat. Like, mm. you know, first row view. I think that's really what it is. I mean, who wouldn't? Nah, I would. <laughs> and, uh, you know, these teams have been great so far. We saw a very fast but very fun first game, game between the plays and One Direction. And they're actually already drafting for the second game. I'm going to hop over to that, but Anna, would you say that it was both fast and furious? <laughs> I, I would venture to label it such, yes, Gilly. If only two arc were playing, then it really <laughs> would be fast and furious. <gasps> the puns are real! Yes, they are alive, guys! This is what happens when we've been casting all day. Things get <laughs> crazy. We're so glad you're here. We are. All right, well... We have started this. It looks like we will be on Battlefield of Eternity. I'm really excited to cast another game on this battleground. It looks like the plays this time are going to choose to ban Zeratul. So realizing that since their opponents have the first pick, they don't want to give him up. We're also going to see a ban on Kael'thas. So all around damage dealers being taken out here. Yeah, no Kael'thas in play yet today. A lot of Kael'thas banning going on. That's an excellent point you make. Uh, I think a lot of people are... Nervous about his power spike at level 16. It's such a big one. Um, as he does pick up that Ignite, it starts dealing a lot more damage. But we will still see Jaina. She's been a top pick consistently. She's kind yeah. of like the new Vala, I think. <gasps> You're right. Jaina is now... Yeah, she's like su succeeded Jaina or Vala's throne. Is that what you say about a throne? Yeah. I don't know. She stepped up to that, that throne. She is now sitting in it. <laughs> she is. She is, in yes. fact, sitting in it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One Direction is going to grab Uther, Sylvanas, and Muradin. Uther we've seen in quite a few games today as well. He has a lot of applicability to be kind of a, I'm going to say a, a Sepank. We have Sepassins and Sepanks, and Uther is a Sepank. He can take a lot of hits as a support. So we have kind of a 1.5 tank composition going on from One Direction, already a support, and Sylvanas. So we know that they have a lot of push potential, and uh, Sylvanas can do a lot to protect beasties as well, as we mentioned. And so that means when Immortals go pushing in lanes, she can help shut down the structures that can be defending against it, and can protect them and keep them alive longer. So that's all a lot of strength on this map. What may be missing for One Direction is a little bit of damage. Yeah, we're going to see them want to pick up some more damage. I'm very happy with that ban that they picked up, as they are going to ban Asmodan. <laughs> they saw the plays show Johanna, and they were like, no, 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 you can't <laughs> do that again. But I, I feel like we don't often actually see him too much on this battleground. The lanes are pretty far apart, as there's that huge central area. But they made the stacks work on the last one, which the Cristallo, the lanes are still pretty far apart there. So maybe the plays were looking at that. They are still going to pick up another specialist. They're going to grab Zagara this time. And I think that's a really great pick versus the Sylvanas that Juan Direction has. Mm, you think because of her pushing potential, she can kind of match blow for blow with Sylvanas, or what are you thinking? Yeah, actually, Sylvanas is... Zagara is one of the heroes that's actually really good versus Sylvanas in lane. Zagara is one of the best 1v1 heroes in the game because mm. she's got that hunter killer. She's just got so much damage. She gets that envenomed spines at four as well, and then her basic damage is attack damage, is doing a ton of damage there. So she's just uh, very good at kind of going blow for blow with Sylvanas, kind of keeping her back a bit. And we are going to see an interesting pickup here as we have ETC going to the roster of Juan Direction in addition to the Muradin. That is a bovine face I have not seen in quite some time, Gilly. And I'm interested to see what they're going to be doing with him on this battlefield. It is very large, so keeping that in mind, if he were to use something like Stage Dive, he could be a great asset in terms of being able to stay in lane or Merc Up or do other things and then still be able to be back in time to help with the Immortal stages. Yeah, I think that's a possibility to see the Stage Dive. I think we could also maybe see 
looking like looking at their composition may be the mosh pit too because they've picked up so many stun mm -hmm. stun so far like with the Muradin and the Uther as well it's possible that they're looking at being able to mosh and then quickly stunning anybody else who might be able to take him out of it because looking at the play's composition they don't really have oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> Both my head my just life. kind of tilted to the side. Where? Well, anyway, um, I was going to say that I don't have a lot of stuns to be able to knock ETC out of that mosh pit. Now there's a Gazlo, and I don't really know what my life is anymore. Well, Gazlo is certainly someone that can do a lot of mercenary work. I'm kind of a broken record about this, but I think that something that teams don't think a lot about sometimes is the strength of mercenaries on this map because the immortal battle pit is so important and a lot of time all the focus all the energy is there but if you can manage to take one of your team members away and do some mercenary work while that's happening it can be absolutely devastating if you do nothing else mm -hmm. uh, and but do have that advantage and then deal with the immortal as well that can be huge so maybe that's what Gazlo is used for he also of course can be great when team members are grouped in a small p position a small place with like something maybe like grab a bomb mm -hmm. and uh, certainly that happens a lot with immortals as well because everyone has to be grouped around this one particular unit on the battleground so here's some thoughts that I have. For one, you mentioned the mercenaries, and you, you mentioned grabbing them during the immortal fight, during or even right before. Right, yeah. Yeah, just so they're pushing, and you kind of force your opponents to either deal with them and kind of miss out on damage right away in the at the beginning of the immortal fight, or you kind of just end up letting mercenaries push against you, and then all of a sudden, hey, where are my towers? So that's going to be very nice. He is so good at being able to pick up Merc Camps by himself e even. So mm -hmm. that is something that One Direction will have to watch out for. Like, where's Gazlo? We better check the Merc Camps. Another thing, too, is I'm wondering if the Robo Goblin, I think the bonus works toward the immortal so maybe their idea is they just use mm. turrets to zone and then quickly like karate chop the uh, the immortal down hmm this is going to be a very fun and new experience as it always is with a new battleground but I'm I really love when we see teams get a little bit creative or show something they've been working on that we're not as familiar with and that's gonna be really fun here on this battleground you wanna maybe explain this battleground to our viewers if they haven't uh, seen too much of it before Gilly yeah, sure, guys. Well, this is the Battlefield of Eternity, Heroes of the Storm's newest battleground. It is a two-lane one where there's a huge space in the center of the map where two immortals will spawn, one for each team. So the idea is that you want to take your opponent's immortal down before yours goes down, and that way it will push down the strongest lane for your opponent. So if you've got a fort up in one lane and they don't have a fort up in the other, it will push toward that fort, which makes it a little less snowball-y than, say, a map like Haunted Mines where the the golem consistently pushes down uh, the same lane. Yeah, I'm really, I'm wondering about that Robo Goblin as you mentioned it because these immortals are not technically mercenaries or structures. They're their battleground objectives, I suppose, and that's not listed on what it, what he affects, but we'll see. We'll see what he chooses. We will see indeed. He is going to be on the side of Blue, which is the plays. Pirate Rum will be playing him. Lex Uther is on Rhaegar. Evan Drinde will be playing the Jaina. Daihu is on Johanna. And playing Zagara will be Zeus. And of course, in red, we have their opponents, uh, One Direction. Slaggers will be on Uther, Dark Crusade 15 on Murden. Rumi Stove will play Sylvanas, XC Mania will be on ETC, and Orbayun will be Vala. You know, we've talked about Gazla, but we haven't really even mentioned the Zagar, except that you, you, she's very good in laning versus the Sylvanas. And mm -hmm. one thing is that she, her creep is amazing on this battleground, too, as you do get a lot of vision around that central area, which is normally a place that's kind of tough for vision. There's a lot of potential for some surprise attacks. There's a lot of uh, vents where you can hide in and jump out at your opponents, and then the fact that you're kind of vulnerable when you're standing around those immortals trying to deal damage. 
Absolutely. She's going to be able to know when there's rotations happening on the map, and th those rotations take a long time here. There's a huge area in the middle of this map that is not technically a lane. As we mentioned the last time, there is a uh, gate here in the middle of the map on either side, but it is not protected by the same uh, turrets or the same fort as a normal lane would be. Yeah, and we mentioned the creep providing vision, and it did just indeed the players were able to see that Muradin was trying to come down for a gank, but not able to do so. And we do have the first Immortals spawning. The first Immortal phase can take a while because there's a lot of sustained fights. People are coming back very quickly thanks to respawn timers. And look at this. We've got Gazlo setting up turrets around as uh, he's trying to use those to protect his Immortal from taking damage from Juan Direction. Interesting. I thought we might see those turrets being used uh, offensively, but certainly defensively is a great idea. And it is helping to protect that immortal that is now receiving some attention from the plays. Meanwhile, Vala has gone down from Juan Direction, which has given level 4 talents to the plays. So, Juan Direction have to be careful here as they still are almost a full level away already from picking up those same talents. And we're going to see them back off a little bit. Slagger's getting low, is going to go all the way back. I really like this vision and defensive setup that we've got from the plays between Zagara and Gazlo. Yeah, very interesting. They're starting to understand, you know, on this map, part of it is that we need to have uh, an understanding of where everyone is. Part of it is that we need to be more present on the map in places than, than we can just being five of us. There's too much room on this map we need to take up. And right now they are sharing that room with their opponents. It looks like the plays are going to have to back off a little bit from Beleth. They were trying to get a few shots on him have to back up and are going to uh, fall back and look for other advantages, looks like. The plays constantly have somebody pushing in top. For a while it was Zagara, now it's going to be Gazlo, since he set up his turrets, kind of did what he needed to do. And now they've already taken down both towers, the gate and the healing well is very, very low too. So this is a huge amount of damage that they've been able to do structurally already. Zeus is getting very low though, getting chased by the tank the very tanky composition of Juan Direction, but he's going to be able to stay alive. Might even be able to take out Dark Crew who's getting very, very low. Will they be able to do so? No. He's going to have to back up. ETC, though, did go down, as did Uther and Gazlo and Vala. I love this strategy because they've got this central hub set up. Like, Mom takes you to the toy store, and she's like, hey, I'm going to stand right here. I have the shopping cart. I'm gonna, you know, look at a few things. You can go and you can look in the in the Tonka truck aisle and you can look in the video game aisle, but when I call you, you have to come right back and defend this immortal with me. <laughs> and so far, that's been working very, very well for the place. Yeah, look, Pirate Realm is completely ready with two more turrets to set up right around Alarian once again. And those are so difficult to engage into. They give, they obviously deal damage, but in addition, they provide vision. Look how much vision they have between the creep and the turrets. They can nearly see almost all of that middle area, something that is not super common. So once again, we're going to see them go back out into lane, keep this top lane pushed. They also have level 7 talents, which their opponents do not have. And as we can see, they've kind of moved away, went back to lane, trying to deal with that. We also see mercenaries happening as well. Johanna and uh, who else is up there? Gazlo are going to be grabbing this siege camp. But we also saw that One Direction took this bottom camp as well. So mercenaries are going to be pushing on both sides of the map. But unfortunately for One Direction, the plays have their immortal Ilarian ready and waiting to uh, push on their bottom lane. And he has lots of shields while he does that. The mercenaries, though, are doing a lot of damage to it at least. So they're, that's pretty nice. He's going to take down some towers, and it looks like we were going to see One Direction try to push back any members of the place we're trying to push with Alarian. So they want to just try to have to deal with him. They don't want to have to deal with members of the plays on the fort as well. They're doing some really good damage to it. I think they will be able to save this fort. In the meantime, though, there is a mean push from the plays up in the top lane. Only poor Dark Crusade 15 was up there to defend for a little while. Now XC Mania is going to join, and it looks like that's enough for the plays. They're going to back up and uh, not push things too hard, but they did manage to take down that whole first tier of structures there. 
Yeah, the plays have been got to be feeling great. They've nearly taken out the bottom four. A rotation after they've taken out one of the heroes from one direction would definitely take it out completely. And they've got one fort down on top as well. So they've nearly taken out all of the tier one structures. They're even being so bold as to take out the mercenaries on the side of one direction. <laughs> so really great play here. Aggressive. Once again, the zoning turrets really doing some serious work. Yeah, absolutely. And we saw kind of the the mechanical and the biological working together as we had all of Zagara's fun little swarm members hanging out with these turrets and just kind of keeping One Direction zoned enough that they weren't comfortable running in and trying to defend their own bruisers. Zagara took the endless creep build and you can see this is just so <laughs> it covers like all of the map. It's ridiculous. So much creep. And that is infuriating too, especially once you get that endless creep talent, it becomes really difficult for your opponents to know exactly where the creep tumors are. So without somebody like a Tassadar with an oracle to show you exactly where the, uh, they are, you end up wasting a lot of abilities trying to clear out the creep. And that's, so that's why we see so much of it. Absolutely. We do see that Sylvanas, on behalf of One Direction, is going to start doing some pushing in the top lane. And she is well equipped, as we mentioned, to do that by herself. So that's something that probably the players are going to want to deal with, but in the meantime, it looks like they're willing to trade because of how much damage they're going to be able to do as five here in the bottom lane. Yeah, they've already taken out Uther. They've also done a lot of damage to the other remaining members of Quan Direction down here. They've even picked up their heroic abilities. They have the Ancestral Heal. They also have Devouring Maw and Grava Bomb, which could be a little anti-synergy, but otherwise they're going to really be able to pull enemies in into a tight area and then throw a ton of damage on them with even a blessed shield to help deal more, or to help keep them in this locked down position even more. And of course, Water em Elemental from Jaina will start throwing a ton of damage on them as well. Looks like the play is feeling very confident they don't even take the time to set up that base of operations around Alarian and instead just go to do some damage to Beleth as they wait for One Direction to respond. Now that One Direction has arrived, looks like they will fall back and they're looking to protect their angelic immortal. Yeah, they really need to pick up their level 10 heroic abilities. There they are. So now this is a good place that we could see One Direction try to engage in. They need to really be careful about that Grava Bomb because it can be a huge problem, but honestly, if they get into a Devouring Maw and then a Grabbing Bomb, it's going to be horrible. Divine Storm is going to go down. It almost takes down Zagara, but Ancestral Heal will keep her up. Meanwhile, Mosh Pit's going to stun several members of the plays, though, but it will not take them out. And meanwhile, while the battle between <laughs> the Immortals is going on above them, we're seeing Uther and Vala taken out. A, a Muradin is going to follow from that, and we should see Sylvanas go down as well as Beleth. So that was an interesting engagement because we did see the level 10 heroic abilities happen for One Direction. Do you think they just didn't have time to really get their heroics in order? Or do you think they were in a bad position? Or do you think the fact that there's still a two level disparity gave the plays still enough of an advantage to really just have a strong showing in that fight? So they had the Divine Shield and then, or Divine Storm, and then went in with the Mosh Pit. But I think part of the issue is. They're really concerned about all getting caught in something like a Grava Bomb. So I don't know if maybe they just weren't quite on top of the mosh pit, but they didn't get anyone taken out from it, which I think is the big thing, right? Like the whole idea is that you can like Divine Storm into mosh pit or vice versa. And if you get enough heroes in there, then you've got, uh, you've got the avatar to jump in and keep stunning. You've got Strafe and Wailing Arrow to jump on top of it. Both teams are kind of wombo focused. It's just that the one from the plays seemed to work out better in that situation. <laughs> Absolutely. This immortal, which was almost, if not completely, full shielded after this immortal phase, does, makes quick work of this wall and the towers. He's going to go in for this fort. Dark Cruade getting very low, but still his tanky self is going to go in. Looks like we have a Devouring Maw go down, but it doesn't manage to grab anybody. That's unfortunate. Though the plays are getting fairly low, we may see them back off soon. <laughs> if the uh, if One Direction doesn't do so first. Yeah, Evan Jr. was actually having some connection issues that caused him to go a little bit too far forward and got taken out because of it. Now Zeus might have some issues here with this ETC who's trying to push her around, but Zagara will be able to get out. Another thing I forgot 
uh, that happened in the last fight too that might be part of the issue is they almost had Zagara down which would have really been an important part of the battle but the ancestral healing was so clutch on Zeus that One Direction then had to focus on somebody else so they didn't quite take somebody down fully. That makes a lot of sense. We do see that now the siege camp at the top will go to the plays. They are showing us the same kind of play that they did in the last game, which is to make sure to, to show no hesitation between actions on the map. They had no hesitation going for this bottom siege camp, but it looks like XC Mania and Dark Crusade were looking to contest ETC getting very low and will be chased out by Jaina coming in to help Zeus and Lex Uther who were already down there. The water elemental gets uh, a little bit of use and will tag after Jaina like a little puppy, although he's not going to do too much more. That does mean there will be a cooldown on her heroic. Yeah, I'm wondering if Trinde dropped that or if that might have been the bot, but either way it did help in securing that takedown at ETC and a great blessed shield is going to make sure they get Uther as well. Now they are moving toward the final remaining keep for Juan direction and with uh, ET Sylvanas who was pushing, she's going to come back as uh, they don't even have level 13 quite yet. So this is a bit of an issue as the keep is going to further the experience lead for the plays. It looks like XC Mania trying so hard maybe to just get away at this point won't be able to do so. Maybe leading the team away from the rest of his, uh, his opponent or his teammates. But the, we have the Immortal spawning in 10 seconds, Anna. We did have One Direction also hit 13 in the meantime, but very shortly after that, the plays got their level 16, which may be even more of a big bump. And uh, the experience lead just is staying solidly in their favor. They did go ahead and trade a lot of damage to happen to this top lane while they were doing that, but they still have a fourth there, and uh, they, they have not lost any... Or have they? Have they lost any forts? Yes. So we have zero structures left for poor One Direction, and they're looking at another situation like in games previous, where they don't have a lot of options in terms of quick, sneaky backdoor moves. They're just solidly needing to make good engagements and take good advantage of these battleground objectives right now. Well, there goes the Mosh, but it only catches Gazlo, who is being taken down, but Ancestral Heal is going to bring him right back up, and in the meantime, Bala goes down thanks to the great burst from Jaina, and now Muradin is down as well. It's In fact, everyone but ETC is down. We already see a GG. We're going to see not even focusing on the Immortals as the players are going to head straight for core. They've got 15 seconds to make something happen here before any other members are up besides ETC. They're going straight after it. Will they be able to take it down in time? It looks like everyone believes so as we're seeing the GGs from both teams. And lots of good manner from One Direction saying, I had fun, guys. That's what we like to see. Was a very fun game. This one, though, ending at about 14 minutes, the previous one at 10 minutes. So we are seeing the dominance that we've seen out of the plays, a team that we know we will need to watch as we move forward in this series. They take this best of 3 2 0. Yeah, great job overall by the plays. Loving that Gazlo play. That was pretty <laughs> cool to see. And. The push potential from them, I mean, I have to go back to when they took down that top, those top structures during that force, first immortal fight. They had those towers and the gate down and were starting to put damage on the fort, even before the immortals were down. And that meant that, first of all, they could kind of control where the immortal went, right? Like the immortal was going to go bottom that way because they had done so much damage. So then they already had its, the top softened up, the immortal went down, took out towers, and then from there both of the forts were vulnerable and we just saw these constant rotations that enabled the plays to get ahead in structures and experience and just really stay there. Yeah, my favorite style on this map is the one that is multi-pronged and you're, where you're taking advantage of all the different activities you can do on this map in order to gain advantages. And that is mercenaries, that is lanes, that is hiding, that is getting ganks, that is especially paying attention to your immortals. And I think that the plays did a really, really great job of that multitasking that this, this battleground does allow. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of it. Yeah, I am as well. I think that the plays have such a good understanding of compositions that work well on different battlegrounds. It's evidenced by the fact that they just pulled out this Gazlo Zagara. Mm -hmm. You never have to worry about somebody stealing the Gazlo, okay? <laughs> That's just not something you have to worry about in a competitive game like this. So that was a really cool clutch final pickup from them that by that point, I mean, what do you... The, I don't think... Uh, 
I think the, the draft for their opponents was already done. So even if they could possibly pick up something to respond to that, it just wasn't in the cards. So really well drafted by the players, mm -hmm. well played by them as well. Yeah, I think that, I mean, this is kind of a le a, something of lesser importance, but I noticed that having Zagara and Gazlo together adds to the overall visual chaos of the game quite a bit, and especially during the immortal phases where you have so much going on on the screen, it can be easy to lose track of where the danger is in an engagement and where the advantages are in an engagement, and I think that the plays are very comfortable with that kind of chaos, and they really showed us how they can use it to their advantage. Yeah, that's definitely true. They had great vision overall, too, from those turrets in the creep. So just a great job by them in, in the series. And with that, they will be moving on to the next round. They will be facing the winner of Gaming Team Gaming and Dauntless. Gaming Team Gaming gave two arc a run for their money in the last open. That was one of our favorite matches that we got to cast. So I'm looking forward to, to the next round, regardless of who the players will be playing. Yeah, I can't wait. Guys, uh, do stick around, and remember that if you have not yet tried out Heroes of the Storm, go to heroesofthestorm.com. You can download it for free. You can play with us. We would love to have you. Also, please take this brief break as time where you can go not only check out the game, but check out Misclicks, and we will see you right back here soon, right, Gilly? We will indeed take a break when we come back. Another best of three. See you then.